Okay. All right. Good evening, everybody. It's uh, 530 on Monday, June 13, 2022. This is the Human Rights Commission of the City of Palm Springs. First item on our agenda tonight is roll call. Very good. Uh, Commissioner Loyola. Present. Commissioner Vignolo has an excused absent. Commissioner Clary. I'm not seeing. Co Commissioner Robles has an excused absence. Commissioner Andrade. And she raised her hand. Yes. Commissioner Flood. Present. Commissioner Ramaran. Present. Vice Chair Shepard. Present. And Chair DeHart. Present. Student Representative Lily Hanner. Uh, she said she would probably be here, but uh, I do not see her. So we'll, we'll indicate if she does join. Yeah. She may come in late, but we have a quorum. We have a quorum. Okay, excellent. Uh, let's see, item five, public comment. At this time, it doesn't appear like we've got any request for public comments, and there are no other callers online. So we will move on to item six. And item six, uh, my comments for today, first I'll start with um, a hearty congratulations to our mayor. Lisa Middleton, who is celebrating a birthday this week and also received an invitation to the Pride celebration at the White House. Um, I'm very jealous that she received one of the coveted invitations, but we uh, wish her a great travel and um, you know, incredible acknowledgement that she was invited to attend. Uh, at the White House with the president and the vice president. Uh, so very, very happy to see that recognition for not only her, but for the city of Palm Springs. Tonight's my last meeting as chair uh, and, and serving as a commissioner on the Human Rights Commission. And I just wanted to take a few minutes to share uh, you know, some of the things, you know, I'm very proud of the contributions that the Human Rights Commission has made over the last six years that I've served. I'm especially proud to, of the work that we've performed this last year in particular. The work that we did on the city's 2040 general plan and priority update is going to guide our city for decades to come. And, and I'm not sure that, that there was a realization of that contribution that we were making to our city's future as we were working on the plan. But as a result of the commission's input to the 2040 general plan vision, the plan now includes an emphasis on diversity, safe neighborhoods, diverse commercial, arts, entertainment, and cultural opportunities. You know, our recommendations were adopted by the city council for eight of the 10 priorities. We now include cultural diversity and identity as elements that make Palm Springs a one of a kind resort destination. Inclusive, safe access to open space is a featured theme. We aspire to have a sustainable, livable, resilient economy and workforce. There is now a focus to have accessible infrastructure for all. And when we talk about all residents, we're talking about all residents, regardless of socioeconomic position. Our work is gonna live on for decades within the city of Palm Springs. And I hope you are as proud as I am of our contributions to that plan and vision. 
Over the time that I've been on the commission, we've taken on important issues and we've provided a broad range of input to the city council. I have always been of the belief that the commission served to support city council and to provide guidance to the city council on their guidance and their direction and the work that was at hand for the council. We've done that for the last six years. We focused on homelessness, senior bill of rights, raising awareness for Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, in, with specifically with the community when they were experiencing microaggressions and racial profiling and hate incidents. We raised awareness on racism, women's rights, doing the right thing for Lawrence Plaza and elevating the voice of survivors of section 14. Serving our community has been a team effort. And I have not served for five terms as the chair of this commission without a strong group of leaders and committed residents who believe in civic service. I've had the privilege of working with more than two dozen commissioners during my service. Sadly, two of those commissioners have passed on and their contributions to the city of Palm Springs shall always be remembered. Nikki Randolph and Jim Gross. Other commissioners that have served during the same time, Wesley Rankins, Jessica Sandrosina, Christy Holstage, Denise Chappelle, Janelle Hunt, Sam Curlio, Suzanne Severin, Deborah Sutton Weiss, David Morgan, Terry Andrade, Ryan Nicho, Glenn Flood, Harold Ames, Edwin Romeron, Donna Shepard, Hugo Loyola, David Vignola, Karina Robles, and Oliver Cleary. It takes a lot to give to our city and city service. May not always be recognized and, and patted on the back for the service and contributions that we make, but I raise the names of those individuals today in appreciation for their service to the commission and the city of Palm Springs. And I also want to make sure that we recognize student representatives that have served on our commission. We've been at the forefront of inviting students to serve on our commission for all of the city commissions in Palm Springs. Jarve Crawford, Jaden Hunt, Lily Hanner, and Ella Cash are all student representatives that I have had a privilege to serve during my term as chair of the Human Rights Commission. I will look back fondly on the time and effort and energy that we put into the commission over these last six years. And I'm excited to see what, the, what will come from the commission as we move forward. That concludes my comments as the chair. The very last time you'll have to indulge me uh, for my chair comments. And I appreciate that and thank you. And thank you all for being on the call tonight. We're moving on to item seven, items for discussion and action. Thank you, Commissioner Flood. I saw you uh, clapping. <laughs> I, uh, applause is much appreciated, thank you. Um, item seven, so we have reports um, or just updates. Um, I'm not aware that we've had any posted committee meetings um, within the organization. Uh, so I don't believe we've got any formal updates but we can have uh, just a general uh, sharing of information as we go through um, community. First, uh, second item on the uh, list is community relations budget personnel report. Uh, Palm Springs Police Department LGBT outreach liaison. You know, our police department continues uh, to do an, an incredible job uh, for the city. Uh, there's there were um, I think just one incident over the last 45 days that was a hate crime incident at the airport um, and beyond that um, you know we don't have any uh, hate crime reports 
uh, coming out of um, the outreach, uh, LGBTQ outreach committee. Um, Commissioner Ramaran, any updates on the calendar? We definitely have calendar updates, but I definitely want to say thank you, Chair DeHart, for your leadership and your direction. It's been a, it's been wonderful to have you like in, you know, you've been such a great model for us, you know, from a lot of us who've come on board just recently, but also you've helped define like how we can really do some really strong um, direction in a city like ours. It's a small town when you think about it, but you know, we, we, we've done some really great work within the commission, but even the work that you do outside of the commission has been a, a great, um, you know, just model for so many of us. And thank you so much for your leadership. And we, we, I wish you all the best on the, the next journey. Thank you. For, for the master calendar, there are a few things that I wanted to uh, just point out, and I won't be too long on this. Um, <clears throat> just a reminder that you can go to the city's uh, calendar, and I know that's one of those resources. Also, Denise Schoolsby with uh, 1PS, who we get our, you know, our pretty much regular emails. I hope you all do get them and receive them. But these are some of the highlights that come out of all those sort of you know, the, the combination of these um, citywide um, observations. One in particular, and this is actually even uh, life and death, is the, the temperatures are heating up in Coachella Valley. So please uh, recommend to people that we do have our cooling centers here that, that, is, that are done in, in partnership with the city, as well as the Community Action Partnership of Riverside. And I think you might be familiar with Community Action Partnership of Riverside because they help trained us um, mediators in the group. Um, so. Um, we're, you know, I'm really excited to see that kind of um, partnership. The, the centers are include Duluth Community Center, of course, James O. Jesse Desert Highland Unity Center and the Palm Spring Public Library. As we come off of May and it's um, the national focus on Asian American Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander Month and Me Mental Health Awareness Month, as well as Memorial Day, of course, and here locally, our, our observation of Harvey Milk Day. Thank you again, Chair DeHart, for that. We, we've had a pretty busy and difficult month, for instance, on the na national focus on gun violence and mass shootings, um, including Buffalo and Uvalde. So we want to definitely recognize that. I extend, I personally extend condolences to those directly affected. Um, there was also a lot of activity around the March for Our Lives recently this past Saturday and the observation of the six year anniversary of the Orlando, Pulse Orlando shooting. Uh, we're, at a we're also at a crossroads of reproductive rights in our country. Um, June 7th was our primary election here in California and I hope we all voted. Just as a reminder, um, we are also now in June and we know that this month is dedicated to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex and asexual pride, LGBTQIA pride. Um, the, um, our, our friends at the LGBTQ plus history and archives of the desert do have an exhibition that's up um, now through, through June 30th um, in collaboration with Pride Month and it'll be on, on view at the Palm Springs Public Library it's called um, Sharing Our Desert's LGBTQ Plus History. So it's a great uh, chance to look at our local history in regards to LGBTQ pride and rights and the progress of that. Our, as you know, our, our greater Palm Springs pride is celebrated in the autumnal, autumnal cooler month of November. Thank you, Chair DeHart, for that too. <laughs> um, and that's in the month of November, November 4th this year through um, November 6th. Um, today, through set to seven o'clock tonight, I just wanted to give a little shout out to this one item that's on our calendar. Um, something to probably look back and maybe there's a recording on it is the special Alzheimer's Association presentation with the library, um, looking at LGBTQ plus issues and community. Um, again, that's on online. Um, the city, the city's calendar also includes, and I want you to definitely please take note of uh, Saturday, June eighteenth, will be the city's uh, observation of the Juneteenth holiday. Uh, it's, a, it's one day earlier than the, the June um, 19th uh, holiday itself. Uh, as you all know, um, it, um, Juneteenth is a federal holiday that's celebrated on June 19th to commemorate the emancipation of enslaved people in the United States. The holiday was celebrated in Texas, where on that date in 1865, the, after, the aftermath of the Civil War, slaves were declared free under the terms of the eight, um, 1862 Emancipation Proclamation. Um, this year's um, event will be held uh, from noon to 6 p.m. at the James O. Jesse Desert Highland Unity Center. And um, community, local community le leaders will be on hand as well as educational materials. So we hope you take advantage of that. And the last item um, I do have to mention is that we, in, to look forward, we all, we do have what is called the All-American 4th of July weekend of events beginning July 1st here in the city of Palm Springs. So we get, we get a whole 
a uh, few days starting July 1st and on to, culminating in the fireworks spectacular on Monday, July 4th um, at uh, Palm Springs Stadium on Baristo, 915 sharp. So I just wanted to highlight those items. I don't know if there were any items that I did miss, but I, I do want to mention a couple of things probably later during um, commissioner comments. Thank you, Chair. Excellent, thank you for that update. Um, Main Street, um, nothing in particular that is uh, specifically human rights related, but there is an uptick in uh, concern of violent behavior incidents occurring with our downtown uh, restaurants and, and bars where there can, there's a growing uh, number of incidents involving uh, individuals in the community uh, and our restaurants and bars. Um, so that's definitely something that I think we need to keep our eyes on, whether it's uh, being driven from the, the homelessness community or just uh, folks that are visiting the town or residents, um, we definitely need to uh, uh, keep our eye on that and assist where the commission may have a role there. Um, item D, uh, Commissioner Vignola is the representative for 1PS. Anybody know anything with 1PS that's happening that we can get an update from? I haven't heard anything uh, happening with 1PS. Um, item three, cultural affairs report. Anything to come from cultural affairs? Item four, Desert Highland Gateway Estates. Commissioners Andrade, Flood, and Shepard. I have uh, nothing to report on that, but I would like to echo Commissioner uh, Amaran's Amar uh, remarks about your know, leadership. Uh, I, I too am very proud to have served with you on the commission and all the best in, in the future. And um, I have nothing to report on, on the Desert Gateway, Highland Gateway. And moving into Veterans Affairs? Nothing there also. Item six, Youth Education. Student Representative Hannard, is there anything that you'd like to share with us today? Um, not that I know under that, uh, under that like section of the committee, no. Uh, but I am on, we are on summer break now. So uh, I was just that's, ask, that's, is everybody, yes. is everybody done with school for, uh, for break time now? Currently that I know of, yes. Um, unless you're doing summer school, which I think there's still this week left of summer school or maybe next week into, into next week. Um, so, but as of like official, like every day of schooling for people uh, that ended June 3rd, that was our last day. Excellent. Well, congratulations. Uh, um, item so seven, happy. Commission Development and Mediation. Commissioners Andrade Vignola. No, we have no update um, at this time. All right. Anything new on the Equity and Social Justice Committee? Uh, yes, um, Chairman. Uh, this committee is having a little tough time getting going. We had a meeting scheduled and we're all ready to go. And then someone realized there was a procedural issue that wasn't properly adhered to. So it had to be canceled and rescheduled. And unless Commissioner Romer, I know something I don't, and I don't think it's gone back on the, on the calendar yet, but we are very anxious for this committee to get started. This has been something that's been, we've been waiting a year. Um, now to work on some of the issues that we've identified. So nothing to report except um, a continued delay. And I want to chair, I want to echo everybody else's uh, congratulations to you, Ron, and appreciation to you for your leadership. You've taught us what a classy chairperson and um, commissioner looks like. Um, you kept us on track for the whole time I've been on the commission and I've been very proud to work for you and continue to support you moving forward. So thank you once again for that. Excellent. Thank you. Mutual, mutual respect there. 
Um, we will go back to uh, item one, executive report standing committee. Under executive report, uh, we discussed at our last meeting uh, that tonight uh, was going to be my last night and that we would hold uh, appointment or election to uh, both the chair and vice chair role. And at this time, I will open the floor uh, for individuals to uh, throw their hat in the ring for the chair's role. Commissioner Loyola is throwing Thank his you. hat in the ring. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Chair the Hart, Vice Chair Shepard, Student Representative Henner, Director Barada, and uh, my fellow commissioners. I took my oath of office back in July of last year, willing and eager to serve the Palm Springs Human Rights Commission. During the course of my very first commission meeting, and as a newly appointed commissioner, I raised my hand to join the executive standing committee. Today, I am very proud of the work and my contributions to bring a Human Rights Commission proclamation for Hispanic Heritage Month, as well as participating in the selection process for this year's Community Service Award honorees. I am also very proud of my record with regard to commission meeting attendance and my voting record on various other issues brought to the commission, as well as my support for programs and practices introduced by other fellow commissioners. I would like to take, take you for the opportunity to present my nomination to step into the commission chair position for our next fiscal year. I promise I will continue to work to advance the commission mandate, which is to promote and protect the diversity of our community and to enforce human and civil rights, provide public education and issue policy recommendations of civil and human rights. To further these objectives of this particular mandate, our commission will advise and make written recommendations to the mayor the city council, the city manager, concerning the development of programs and practices that effectively advance the implementation of the international human rights principles and standards in our community and close to home. I ask for your vote of confidence and I sincerely thank you. All right, thank you. Any other, Commissioner Andrade? Okay. Um... It's my uh, pleasure with former approval and okay from uh, Commissioner Vignolo to add his name to the list of candidates for chair. Excellent, thank you. Any other hats being thrown into the ring right now? Even though I don't see we're wearing hats, uh, we've got one in the ring already. All right, we'll move on to vice chair. Uh, and I would like to open uh, the, the, the conversation with a uh, hearty endorsement and uh, nomination for our vice chair, uh, Shepard, to continue in her role as vice chair of the commission. I believe she has served us well, and she, her service to the commission on, and the city uh, is certainly recognized and, and appreciated. Be my honor to continue to do so. I appreciate all that we've accomplished this past year and would like to continue down that path. Excellent. Any other hats in the ring for vice chair? Having none, uh, let's uh, let we can take a vote of acclamation of support for uh, the new chair, uh, Hugo Loyola and Vice Chair Commissioner, or Vice Chair Shepard uh, for the next term of 22-23 of the Human Rights Commission. All in favor? We can raise our hands. Uh, one, two, three. Commissioner Loyal, are you not voting? Four, one, two, three, four. Uh, I'm all opposed. Abstention, one abstention, all right. So we've got one, two, three, four in support, one abstention, 
and I didn't catch Commissioner Andrade's vote. It did not vote. Um, it did did I make a mistake in in nominating Commissioner Bignola for that position or? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear Bignola. Yeah, oh. I made the comment that with his permission and for and consent that I was nominating him for. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry about that, we'll go backwards. If, I'm, uh, I'm sorry Ramaran, if I didn't make it clear, I apologize. No, sorry about that. Commissioner Ramaran, I see your hand raised. Uh, that was my reason for abstaining because of that. I, I Got it. Thank you. Of, I was confused about what was happening. There. Thank yep. you. No, I, I appreciate that being pointed out. Um, I, I didn't understand that properly. Uh, so for the role of uh, chair of the commission, we have two nominations, one for Commissioner Vignolo and one for Commissioner Loyola. Uh, all those in favor for Commissioner Vignolo, please raise your hand. We have one vote for Commissioner Vignola. All those in favor of Commissioner Loyola, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Five to one, Commissioner Loyola, you have won the confidence of the commission to serve as chair for the 22-23 term. Now we'll vote on the vice chair role and if I understand correctly, we only have one candidate uh, that is uh, in the running for vice chair, and that's our vice chair, Shepard. All in favor of uh, vice chair Shepard serving as uh, another term of 22-23, please raise your hand. Uh, we have unanimous support for vice chair Shepard. Congratulations to both of you. Uh, and thank you very much for your continued service on the commission. Now we move into item B, the joint meeting and presentation to commissions and city council, June 21 of 2022. And Jay is going to give us uh, an update there. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think, uh, have you all received the invite to this meeting? Uh, I'm on, uh, I was informed that our communication staff would send that out. Okay, very good. Everyone's nodding their heads. Um, so I haven't seen it, <laughs> but uh, my understanding is the um, uh, each commission will have 10 minutes, uh, five minutes to talk about its past accomplishments and five minutes to talk about where it would like to go in the next year. So, uh, this meeting, this joint meeting of all the commissions and the city council on June 21st, uh, will have, they'll all be presenting those types of presentations. So what, it, it, let me also mention, uh, dinner for that meeting starts at 5 p.m. Uh, so we'd wanna be there uh, by five. Uh, so, and everyone is invited. Uh, what I would like to do though, because, um, <clears throat> this came up quite fast is uh, determine what uh, what what you'd like to highlight over the past year and highlight for the upcoming year. Uh, I would note um, uh, Chair DeHart has uh, uh, listed a number of accomplishments that we may touch on, uh, which which is a strong possibility. Uh, if, if everyone agrees, but also uh, the plans for the future, the uh, matrix that was submitted may contain a lot of the information there. But uh, I think just quickly though, I wanna see if there's any other um, <clears throat> thoughts or ideas on what should be uh, shared with the other commissions and the city council on, on moving forward. And it does look like there's a question. Vice Chair? Just a suggestion. Um, I really enjoyed the recap that you gave today, um, Chairman DeHart. Um, I think you would get on some of the, the high notes of our service. And I wonder if it would make sense if we have 10 minutes, if we gave five minutes to you to review that list and five minutes to our new chair to introduce himself and introduce possibly 
myself, so they'll know there's female representation on the, the commission and the other commissioners if they're available to be introduced, and then maybe a couple of items on which we plan to focus on going forward. Okay. Did everybody hear that? I'm, uh, my audio is, is kind of muffled. Head shakes were okay. Um, any other thoughts that folks would like to contribute? We like vice chair's um, suggestion. Okay, excellent. Then I think we can move forward that way with consensus, Jay. Um, you know, I, you know, my question, we haven't received our instructions for next year from city council. So are they asking us to, I'm not sure what they're asking us to do when we've already submitted our priorities and we're waiting for direction from council now. Uh, I think we've all been waiting for that. Uh, and so, uh, Mr. Chair, I would recommend picking up from the matrix that was submitted. If there mm -hmm. are any edits or changes between uh, from the time it was submitted to now that you feel would be important, um, those should probably be included with the presentation also. And so the combination of those really does kind of lay out the direction for the future. But as we all know, the, the world, you know, seems to change uh, every, every day. So um, if there's any other updates, uh, I, I'm sure we could, we could add that in. I think that would be the only direction we really can go is we've already approved and sent forward our suggested priorities. And since that's already been voted on by and, and discussed by the commission, then maybe you know that would be what we would present again to city council, even though they already have it. Um, and then, then we're just in a position of waiting for um, priority guidance from council for 22-23. Uh, Does that make sense to everybody? So I think uh, without being able to have a meeting before the 21st, uh, we wouldn't be able to come up with agreement if there were any other new topics. Um, so, Commissioner, our um, uh, chair uh, to be, Loyola, uh, may perhaps, um, Jay, are we allowed to have a conversation? We can talk about what our presentation would be to council on the 21st, right? Without a. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. I think that would be the way to uh, be able to put this together. Yeah, okay. All right. Oh, so um, I'm sorry. Um, you know, as, as part of the agenda, it did come up much quicker than I think most of us staff anticipated. Uh, I think based on what you've provided, uh, Mr. Chair, if, if you have notes on the accomplishments, if you could send that to me, I will need to provide these to the city manager's office um, by tomorrow. Uh, and um, if you do have a chance with a chair to be Loyola to uh, address other uh, potential topics, just, you know, we can uh, add those in as needed. I would though just have to give the city manager's office some idea what direction we're headed in. And I think, I think for the most part, we have that. Yeah, I, I think what our conversation is, is what's already been submitted. So, um, yeah, we will. What time tomorrow, Jay? Noon. Is everyone planning to attend? Say again. Is everyone planning to attend? Is everybody planning to attend the June 21 reception or dinner? Yeah. Commissioner Ramran? Yes. Uh, student rep? Have you, have you gotten a copy of the email invitation? No, I'm kind of, this is the first time I'm hearing of this. So I'm a little okay. lost, but it's fine. Yeah, so since uh, 
we're the, I think we're the only one with the student representative. Uh, they may not have uh, knowledge of that. So um, I will get you, uh, I'll send you the, I believe they just sent us a new reminder today. Um, so I'll send that to right. you and then you respond directly to that email, okay? So they have your, right. con Thank you. your contact information and everything. Okay, well, okay. for everybody who's on the call tonight, we're gonna have good representation uh, at that meeting. And I appreciate uh, city council uh, you know, moving forward with having this gathering and, and hope that it will be an annual gathering so that all the commissions can come together and at least uh, have, you know, start to um, uh, build a sense of unity and camaraderie in, in the effort uh, of everybody's work. Um, you know, imagine how it would have been if we had been working face to face with the uh, Sustainability Commission for the last four years on the original tobacco ordinance, which is now the, um, uh, I don't even know the long name of it, um, healthy breathing air quality ordinance, whatever it might be. Um, I think we would have, um, outcomes would have been much easier to attain if we, we had those relationships. So excellent. Okay, Jay, anything else on uh, item B? Uh, no, that's it. I'll touch base with uh, both of you uh, tomorrow and uh, see if, uh, you know, we, we need to do anything more. Yeah, perfect. Uh, since we don't have, is anybody uh, speaking on behalf of item C? Uh, I, I can give an update. Um, okay. Which is, uh, Commissioner Robles did send a note that um, the Boys and Girls Club just returned from their break, so uh, she'll be connecting with their team sometime next week and plan the program kickoff. There's the update. Okay. Then item D, National Bullying Month Symposium. Who do we have speaking on item D? You know, we, we really... Um, just need input from the rest of the commissioners. We sent out the draft that Commissioner Vignolo had prepared. And so I think at this time, if you have comments on that, uh, please uh, send your comments to Commissioner Vignolo or to me, and uh, we'll get, we'll work with him to um, finalize that draft and the plans. And um, if you have the chance, please do take a look at it. So you don't, should we definitely copy you on those comments, Jay, or um, Commissioner Vignola to- I would say Commissioner Vignola is the primary person to get the comments to. You don't necessarily need to copy me, but uh, you could also just send them directly to me and I will forward them to Commissioner Vignola. Okay. Uh, either way, either one of us, uh, I think would be fine. Yeah. All right, and everybody did receive a copy of um, the uh, the report that we from Commissioner Vignola. Okay, Commissioner Student Representative Hannah, did you receive a copy? Uh, yes, I did. I'm, actually, I'm I'm staring at it right now. Okay, good. All right. Well, your your input would be. Um, uh, very important for us to get on that. Okay, so please do send your thoughts. I'll have to, to I'll flip over again. I haven't read it in a second. But okay. I, I will look over it again when I get the chance. Okay. Just send your comments to Commissioner Vignola. Okay. All right, we are up to item E, uh, Commissioner Staff and Student Comments. Do we have any Commissioner Staff and Student Comments starting at the top of the page, Commissioner Amaran? Actually, I think I said a lot <laughs> during the, the master calendar, but thank you again, Chair DeHart, for your leadership um, with our commission. It means so much to so many of us. Thank you. Commissioner Andrade. 
Yes, a couple things. Um, I too would like to thank you, Ron, for your service to Palm Springs and specifically to us as the Human Rights Commission. I um, learned a lot from you in, in my time on the commission and, and look forward to, to following in your footsteps in terms of the, the work we do here. So um, thank you. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, and I don't know where it would have been appropriate if, if anywhere, but um, kind of piggybacking on what you talked about a little bit ago, um, the increased violent behavior in our community um, and nationally, I, I had an idea that was somewhat, somewhat similar to what uh, Commissioner Benola wants to do with, with the um, symposium but more like a, like a listening session um, and on, on gun violence. Um, I wonder if that doesn't dovetail with our responsibility to educate the community. I thought maybe we could perhaps uh, get Desert Highlands involved in this since they have a particular high incidence of these kinds of things in their community. Um, definitely the police department, um, perhaps uh, um, Mayor Pro Tem Garner. Um, I just had a lot of random ideas, but the other thing is maybe we could do like a little adjunct um, piece on conflict resolution for you, because you know we obviously ha are, are charged with doing that in our community mediation. Perhaps maybe we could do conflict resolution uh, points for, for youth. So I don't know where we need to go with that. I know this is a, some, uh, definitely a timely subject and, and one that is concerning everybody. But I think catching the youth at this point would really be um, an, important, an important place to start. So I, again, I don't know where we would start with this, if it would be um, you know, the liaisons to, to uh, Desert Highlands or which committee it would be, or can we just be ad hoc for the sake of planning? Mm -hmm. I, um, I, I it's certainly a very important topic, but I would suggest that we don't single out Desert Highlands and that we look at citywide um, um, as, you know, as, as an issue to address for all of the city and not just one uh, particular area. Um, we can agendize the item and that will begin the formal conversation um, that, that the commission can, can have. Um, I think we should give thought to when, you know, gun control is a very broad topic, right? And we have little authority at the city level when it comes to gun control let alone enforcing the ordinances that are on the books now within the city of Palm Springs that really aren't enforceable. Um, so when we talk about that, um, if everybody can come to the next meeting with maybe thoughts of, and ideas of, of specifically, how can the commission contribute to an outcome that we would see um, you know, we would we would see something, uh, the fruit of the work, and and uh, Commissioner Andrade, you touched on a, a couple of areas that I think the commissioner certain the commission can certainly focus on uh, a youth focus. You know, are there are there ways that the commission can uh, can engage youth within our community um, and programming for youth and maybe working with. Um, organizations that are in place now, and, and I don't know their, their proper name, but it's um, 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 uh, the, the Black Youth Organization uh, Engaging Youth Leadership, um, that um, you know, maybe that could be a possibility where we work with them and, and look at how can we raise the visibility of their work in the community and bring together uh, youth and adults to uh, address the issue. Um, uh, I, I, just, I think we need to have a specific path. And, and if I can encourage everybody to come to the next meeting with some ideas on what that path could be for the community 
um, then we can have a really fruitful conversation and, and then go to the police department, go to city manager, go to um, um, James O'Jesse and, and say, hey, here's, you know, here's a thought that we have. Is this something that we could collaborate with you on? Are there other thoughts? Could I just add, just for clarification, that I didn't, I did not foresee this being about gun control. I really saw it more about being um, a listening session on the impact of violence in a, in the community. I think gun control, as you're alluding to, is way above our pay grade. Um, but but I do think that I think that the impact of the youth in our community, um, with regard to what's going on locally and everywhere. Um, sure. That's kind of more the, and I, I did not intend to single out Desert Highlands by any means, other than the fact that the police department has definitely singled them out as to the, the, the number of incidents that occur. So um, yeah, definitely not, but collaborating with them as a result of that. So I just yeah. want to make clear those two things. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. And, and you know, we've had a number of shootings in South Palm Springs uh, of recent. So it is a citywide issue that we as a commission would want to address uh, in particular. Now, and, and I think your clarification is 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 really good. Um, and and the, the conversation would be of the commission. What do we do with that listening session? You know, what what does this commission do with information that's gathered at that listening session that may be the same information that already comes from the Desert Highlands Gateway Association, or that may already have come from the meetings that the council member Gardner has had in the community. Um, but what specifically would we want to do as a commission with that information? If we gather information and we create this listening opportunity, then we're gonna be, we will be looked at as entity that the community would be looking at us to help, uh, you know, help bring a solution or help bridge um, uh, bridge the, the, the different uh, groups within the community. So let's come, let's come together with the next meeting with those thoughts and, and how can we be, it's, you know, we wanna have, bring people together and thought and listen and get input. But what do we do with that? Do you see the overlapping of our our uh, alternative conflict resolution um, as as being useful in that arena as well? Um, that's, yeah, and, it, and that could that could be. A, I I think that's an excellent focus. You know, so I think you know that I I would encourage the commission to talk about that specifically and how can we, um, you know, is there a role that we can fit within that? that specific conversation. Yeah, excellent. Thank you for that input. Okay, any other commissioner staff comments? Commissioner Flood. Uh, yeah, I just want to add that uh, the my mediation uh, training continues uh, since mid-May uh, and starting this month, of course, I've been spending uh, Tuesdays at the Palm Springs uh, Superior Courthouse uh, under some uh, leadership of people who are a vast experience in mediation, so I'm finding it worthwhile, and hopefully a few more co-mediations with them. I could be, I can see certification down the road. I just can't tell you when, but uh, I can see it coming. That's all I have. Excellent. Well, thank you for doing that. We appreciate you making that commitment there. So um, keep keep coming back with updates, Commissioner Chair Elect Laola. Um, actually, I'm just taking some notes because I think that these issues will, are so, so important. And um, I love to see that we're putting some of these items in the agenda for our next meeting. And yes, it is all about uh, really listening carefully about um, you know ideas and uh, how can these become actionable? Because we can always put a lot of things forward, uh, not really realizing whether or not these are, those become actionable and adoptable. So that's going to be really important. Okay, Vice Chair Shepard. I just wondered if there's still an opportunity to get involved in the mediation training at this point. 
I wasn't able to do it last year when uh, Mr. Andrade and Flood started out with this. Um, is there still an opportunity to get on board with that? Jay or? You know, I don't know if uh, um, <clears throat> those who've gone through uh, are probably closer to it than I am. All I know was uh, we were able to arrange training through the Community Action Partnership, uh, who seems to be looking for mediators. So we can provide that information to you, uh, Vice Chair. Uh, but in addition to that, I don't know if um, Commissioners Ramaran or Flood has any other advice. The only thing I could add is that uh, they keep saying they do need more mediators. So the, the, the court having been backlogged because of the pandemic, they, there's so many cases. I mean, last week I was there just from 8.30 till about 4.30 almost. And we went through many cases, about four different cases. And then there was some left over for the next, next uh, term, next day. So they said they still need them, but I, I don't know whether or not the, the classroom training uh, like I went through uh, is available, uh, uh, but I think uh, connect, connecting with the community action program would be the best way to go. Thank you. So okay. Jay, you can, you can forward that information to Vice Chair? I'll forward it to the entire group. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, item F. Any additional topical news, newsworthy items? I think we uh, item E and item F for us is the same thing. So we basically cover newsworthy items when we have item E. Uh, so I think we're covered there. Uh, agenda items for the next meeting. We've identified one, um, and that's a community conversation on um, how do we want to label it? on um, behavioral, um, Commission Andrade, how would you like to see it labeled? Um, let's see what I had in mind. Um, I, I think, um, again, a, lis a less listening session is a place to start if it's, especially if it's youth, I feel as if that's a, a, a more, uh, I mean, level playing field for them. And, and instead of a lot of people just getting up and talking with them, it's listening to them, maybe some breakout sessions, that type of thing. Um, so just a, a listening session on the impact, the impact of violence and whether it's in our community or whether it's just the, just the exposure in, in general. But specifically on you? Well, that's what that's where I started um, was with youth, and that's why I wanted to go that listening route. Um, I think you know, obviously, if you wanted to expand it to to just everybody, but I I feel as if it's exclusive to children, um, school age children, that we might get more feedback than if adults are are. But that's just that's just my thought. I'm I'm really open. I. I happen to like the idea of, of just getting some feedback from our community. And I feel as if youth is a good place to start, so. Okay, so how about we uh, label agenda item, um, listening session on uh, uh, violence in our community. Okay. It's a broad topic, so it, that can be narrowed down in any particular direction that the commission would like to take it. Uh, listening session on the impact of violence in our community, uh, our communities. Uh, okay, any other announcements? I don't see any. Beautiful. Then uh, this too is going to go down on the record books as one of our shortest meetings. Uh, thank you all for participating. Uh, we will move to adjournment. Uh, to an adjourned regular meeting, Monday, July 11, 2022. And I look forward to seeing you all at the uh, joint meeting uh, with City Council on June 21st, 2022 at the Convention Center. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Have a good night.